Da, 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 dee, da, da, da. Howdy folks, it is 18th of April. Welcome. Yeah, I've not been not been doing many videos just lately, just been out of the out of the routine, you know what I mean? But here we are, you know, I'm here in the studio, I'm sort of just tinkering around. What am I doing? Um basically I'm getting ready for firing. Um yeah, I've got mugs, mugs over here. These are waiting to be banded and decorated. I've got these ones up here. This is a new style of tankard that I'm doing, just a slightly different design. It's a more of a bellied, a bellied design. Um, these ones I've halfway glazed down like that. They're raw, uh, raw glazed for once firing at cone 10 in reduction. For those of you who are not up to speed with what I'm doing, uh, so yeah, I'm just putting them here in this white glaze and um, there's just a few here. I've just got to do on the, on the inside only here is, here's one of the mugs. This is the shape. This one has a, a roller stamp uh, detail on the bottom as well as a stamp at the base of the handle there. It's just a little detail, you know, a little decorative feature. These are thrown um, same weight as my usual other tankards, the sort of uh, more slender version, uh, 15 ounces, and they're thrown to about five, five, just a bit over five inches, about five and, not quite five and three quarters, but between five and three quarters and five and a half. Okay. Because I know someone will ask, Simon, what weight are those? So yeah, the routine with raw glazing is, what I do is I glaze first the inside. That's the thing about raw glazing, it's a two part process. And then we, we pour out like that. This is the inside only. And now I'm just spraying some water over the outside, okay? That's just to equalize out the, the difference between the inside and the outside of the pot from a humidity, from a water content point of view. And that's because if you've got a lot of moisture on the inside on a raw pot this is just higher probability of cracking occurring when you pour a wet glaze on the inside and the outside of the piece is still is still dry you see it reduces the risk factor um, of cracking and that's what you have to watch out for with raw glazing, uh, the expansion of the piece due to the water content can cause cracking. Yeah, I've got about 50 of these tankers here, awaiting my attention. Just missed a bit on that one. If you miss, just be quick, quickly put a little bit more glaze in and and swoosh it out where you missed. Don't panic. Now I'll show you this. Because of that clumsiness, you see what's happened here. Now if that happens, don't panic. No need to panic. Okay, because you can, these are going to be glazed over the lip anyway. So that little bit of, that little bit of, uh, I can just easily wipe away, you see. So where it looks a little untidy here over the lip, it doesn't matter because it's going to be reglazed anyway, down to the, the elbow here. You see, 
and over the handle. So all is okay. But you know, <laughs> that's not an excuse for your clumsy glazing son. <laughs> I know. But we're human as well, you know. I think we're still human. Hope. Human and not transhuman. I'm not implanted with chips to augment <laughs> my humanity. Fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't need augmentation. Okay, so there, you know, just do you see what I'm doing here? A little of this kind of thing, uh, 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 a, little, a little of that, you see, just to get excess drippage away. Okay, so that's the last of those. So let's see, where can I put these? Can get a bit crowded, you know, on the work, work table. Just put them over there for now. So what next? Oh yeah, those guys over there. That, now those are the same as what you've just seen me doing. Um, I need to... You see how good it is to have decent wear boards in your pottery. Make sure you've got wear boards, okay? Then you can move your, your wares around. So, now these I did yesterday, and these are now ready to be... What I usually do with these is just glaze them to the, the point there of the bottom of the lip rest, the elbow, and, and then over the handle. Now what I'll do is, before I do that, you'll notice here some raised bits of glaze. Now with these I, I don't, I tend to just reduce them down just a little bit if there are any of those. So you just want to have a look, all right, before you commit to glaze. Just, just if there's any kind of Because basically, you see, you've got glaze there on the lip already, so if I'm going to dip it again, I'm going to get a double thickness, you see. So here, here we have an example where you see it's a little... Uh, the drip didn't, you know, didn't quite drip away perfectly. Such is life. <laughs> hey, wouldn't it be good if everything was just perfect in the pottery? Yeah. Perfection in the pottery. Gosh. No cracks, no, no drips, no warps, no crawling of glaze. Nothing, everything perfect. Oh, that would be good, wouldn't it? Not quite like that, is it? It's a bit like us, we're all cracked pots, aren't we? Yep, we are all cracked pots. Okay, now, nice one. This is just lightly, a light scraping, okay, with a little blade like that. See that one there? Well, that guy, we, we, we want to just. And what you can do is you can do that and you can just like that. A little light rubbing. Okay. Right. So 
what we're going to do with these is um, I'm going to hold the, the oh this is one I did a <laughs> an experimental this is a one-off I don't have any others like this I don't know if you'll see it it was an experimental roller stamp that I made that goes along the bottom of, that I've put along the bottom here I don't know if you can make out what it says it says keep practicing hmm. yeah we could do some I'm gonna do some more of those we're gonna have some keep practicing mugs to inspire people to keep practicing yes sir so when I do when I come to glaze these and hold them over the bucket here and dip it down it's quite difficult to get the glaze to be sort of straight on that elbow you find because it's down in the bucket and you think you've got it straight but when you pull it out you look at it and you think ah oh, oh. <laughs> so I've got a little thing to show you A little trick let's say or yes in computer terminology we would say a hack call it what you like a hack a shortcut a tip a trick so we're gonna we're gonna use one of these guys. Okay, let's just bring this over. Basically, uh, I can't really show you. I've actually done a video on this one time before. Um, let's just see how I do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this this level and place it there like that. Okay. Now I'm going to hold it conveniently because we have the roller stamp decoration along the bottom here, along the base. It actually gives me quite a good grip. So what you've got to do is get that bubble in the middle, in the middle of those concentric rings there. When I dip it in, let's see how, how good we can do this. And then I've got to get it to the right, the right depth as well. Not only get it, get it... Um, level but also get it to the right depth okay i'm taking it out ah, i went too deep <laughs> went too deep i didn't go i went a little bit past where i wanted to go it doesn't matter um, um and you'll see some drippage there as well but what you will notice is that it's level okay so we'll do another as always it's a case of uh, it's a case of practice isn't it yes sir right let's hold this and get that bubble in the middle this time I'll try not to be quite so jumping off into the deep end. Now I've done this in the past uh, with a light on the outside of the bucket here shining through the plastic of the bucket and a mirror hung there like that so I could see more accurately the... there you go So there, when I went too deep, this one, and that one is, is better. Oh, I haven't done the handle, have I? I'm supposed to do the handle. I'm supposed to do that. Not afterwards, I'm supposed to do it at the time. At the same time. Yeah, 
I'm going to leave it actually. I don't think it really needs to have the idea, you know, being that the the, the glaze comes down. It, it, it's you can do do whatever grabs you in the moment. You know, you haven't got to. Let's have a look. Okay, now look, another thing to bear in mind, when you're glazing and you're only dipping down a small amount into the glaze bucket, you find that the glaze will sink over a period of time and the water it gets watery on the surface, you see. So just keep, remember, give it a... Agitate it, okay, just to, to bring up from the, bo the bottom the the coarser particles, the more heavy particles of glaze. We need them, you see. Okay, again. There. Now then, get it in the middle of the bubble. Hold that bubble in the middle. Get them in the middle. Go down. Oh, gosh, it's like... Yeah, I'm not even bothered to do that over the handle. I, I usually do, but today I just feel, yeah, we're just going to leave it. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Here we go. Maybe I can get the, no, I'm going to be trying to be clever now, get the camera and sort of take you into the bucket with me. It might not be a good idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. I hope I don't drop the camera in. Okay, and look for that, looking for that, looking for that bubble in the middle, and then he's very, he twitches around the bubble, you know, he doesn't stay where you want him to. Ooh. Because I've got the camera in my other hand, I can't take the bubble off. So we're just going to have to whoop, throw him on the floor. Uh, now that is that is not you see. <clears throat> he got he globulated there on the top, didn't he? A bit. Where'd he go? Anyway, you, you get the idea, and you don't have to do this. You don't have to use the bubble. Let's do one. Let's do one without a bubble at all. I mean, I can probably do these without the bubble adequately well, but that one is okay. So here's an interesting thing just to show you. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but right there, right there, there's a, a little... Don't know what that is. Well, I do actually. That little thing there, and my f end of my finger. And if you can see it, so that for a long while I couldn't figure out what these little bits of. I determined that they were bits of plastic, and I couldn't understand how they were getting into the glaze. And then I realised that the whisk that I was using here, right on the very base here, this whisk. Through, through, through use over the years has worn away there and it's really sharp. So when I was stirring up the, the glaze, as this was scraping along the bottom of the bucket, it was effectively shaving off a slither of plastic from the bottom of the bucket. And that was, that was the, the origin, the source of that contamination. Interesting. So just hold that. No, 
Now my experience with doing this is some days I'm, I'm, I'm re reasonably good at doing it and other days I'm, I'm not so good. Ah. You see, I, I did the handle there and because I did the handle I turned it like that to dip the handle and this hadn't dried properly here and you see what it did. It, it, again, it's not a case of... You just learn, learn, adjust your technique. Um, in this case, of course, I can just wipe it. These here on the outside, by the way, will be sprayed with wood ash from my fireplace, from my, from my wood stove there. Now, any of these that have globules on like this, uh, I will, when I come to do the banding and decorating over there, I will remove them. It's better not to have to do that, but... Better to do it perfect again, you know. It's the perfection we strive for, but we know we're human, we're not going to. We will make mistakes, things will dribble, things will happen, as we know. But you know, that's all, it's a handmade pot, you know. It's actually, it's sometimes, it's, it's not the pots that are absolutely perfect, that are the best pots, it's sometimes it's the pots that are, have these little imperfections that actually have the most appeal. You know, isn't it weird? We strive for perfection, but we know we're not going to arrive. And, and when the, the pot is in the final analysis, when we look at it, we think, well, you know what? You line all the, your pots up, you know, and you look at all the ones that have come out sort of technically perfect. And then, you, and then you put them alongside the ones that have got little sort of things about them where you can clearly see the maker's hand. And it's the ones that, it's the ones that have got a little dribble, the ones that have got a little maybe slightly warped or slightly not quite perfect. The, the, those are the ones actually that I prefer, not the, not the perfect ones. Isn't it strange? But as they say, or let's say it has been said, whether they, whoever said it, there is beauty in irregularity. That is so true. Beauty in irregularity. I guess that's why we like nature because nature is, is beautiful because of its irregularity no two blades of grass are the same no two branches of a tree are the same no two clouds are the same no two plowed fields are the same so gotta keep these things in mind Hold it about three or four seconds. Da, 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 da. Well, folks. Oh, now look at that one. You see, when I, I did that, I dipped the handle. I didn't get that quite right. That's okay. We'll look at it and we'll analyze it and then we'll get rid of that plastic again. A bit of that plastic. The bottom of my bucket. <laughs> 
Hey, thanks for joining us folks. Again, here in the pottery, it's much the same as we've done in the past. I guess every video is a bit different. Go to my website, simonleafpottery.com, see if there's anything you like there. We do sell tools. There are pots and tankards and odds and odds and sorts, bits and pieces. Check them out. Uh, we do run workshops here. We have workshop schedule on my uh, website there. Check that out. Um, yeah, uh, workshops are filling up. We've got spaces. We're running a workshop this coming weekend. And then generally like one a month. Um, so May, uh, May, June, July, August, September, right through till November. So yeah, I'm also taking orders on finished, finished leech treadle wheels, like the one under that plastic there. You've seen them, you know what they are. Uh, if you're interested in a finished one for pickup only, I'm not shipping them anymore. That's what I've done now. I've just decided not to ship. Okay, folks, so there it is. Whoops. Thanks for joining me, as always. Keep practicing. Build your muscle memory <laughs> in your fingers and arms. That's what it's all about. Uh, eye, eye, hand, coordination and building muscle memory okay all right hey take care see you in the next video bye for now did it